Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Hugo's Desk. So today, yes, I'm not on my desk, I don't even have a desk today. So I'm in Tallinn, I'm actually supervising a short film and I took this opportunity to actually show you how to make an HDRI uh, using an eight millimeter lens. So basically the setup is quite simple. You basically have to have uh, this equipment. You basically have to have a very sturdy tripod. It's uh, sturdy because you want to make sure that the tripod has, uh, you know, uh, air bubbles so that you can make sure that it's really, really uh, centered and leveled. Uh, of course, you need a full frame camera. In this case, I am using the Canon 5D. It doesn't need to be the Mach 2. This is the Canon 5D Mach 2, but you can use the Mach 3. You can even use the Mach 1. It doesn't matter as long as it's a full frame camera. Also using an 8mm lens. In this case, I'm using the L Canon lens 8mm to 15mm f4. Uh, you can also get the Sigma 8mm, it will also work. Uh, and also, I do have the, three, the 360 HDRI head, which is really handy because it allows you to actually do uh, 90 degrees increments when you want to try to do the HDRI. And last but not least, you will also need one of these. Now this is not mandatory, this is a remote controller. Uh, you can use a remote controller, but you also can use your laptop or you can use, uh, in, if you don't want to use your laptop or if you actually have a very stressed uh, environment, you can also use a manual trigger or a remote trigger. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is to put the camera in this 360 head, uh, which is, uh, it has its own uh, air bubble so that you can actually check if it's centered or not. Of course, this tripod also has an air bubble, but you need to be careful that the actual head has a separate head bubble because it needs to be leveled uh, according to this floor. Uh, that's the first step you do. So first of all, you do that, and then, of course, you level everything as best as you can. Of course, you need to be careful that the floor could be a problem, so you need to choose where you're gonna do your HDRI first so that you can make sure that the level is for this place. So for example, this environment, which is a very, very old warehouse, every piece of this floor will be a different level. So you have to be careful with that. Uh, so once you have the head leveled, uh, you're gonna start by choosing your main uh, area that you wanna photograph. So for example, if you wanna have your CG done to that side, or if you wanna have your CG done to this side, you might want to start your photo to the side where the main action will happen. So in this case, let's imagine that we're gonna collect, we're gonna put a CG character right in front of us. So then we're gonna have the camera facing us. Now the eight millimeter lens has a cap, so we need to of course remove all the caps and it has to be both caps. Um, sorry, this is a bit stuck haven't taken away for a long time. You want to make sure that the two caps are off because, because it's an eight millimeter lens and it's a full sensor camera, you see basically everything. You see 180 uh, degrees of field of view. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure you, is that you want to clean the lens before you start this because uh, any spot on the lens might give you a problem later on and you might have to do some paint work and clean, you know. Very important as well is for you to understand that the, the lens should be locked to manual focus uh, because you want to make sure you make the sharpest HDRI possible. And so once you do this, you're going to want to put the camera to manual. You want to put the setting the camera to manual and you want to connect your remote controller. Now the remote controller always comes with the actual controller which looks like this. So this is the actual controller which allows you to do time lapses, it allows you to do HDRI photos, it also allows you to become a manual trigger as well. It usually comes with a cable and this is uh, not a normal USB cable. A lot of people think it's a, a normal USB cable but it isn't. It's actually a specific cable made just for the remote. I'm sure that uh, they've done that just so that they can earn a little bit more money uh, out of all of us. So the first thing you do of course is you attach the cable uh, into the remote and then on the camera you're going to find the USB connection on the side. And now here's the thing that you need to be careful. Uh, you want to you always want to have the camera off uh, because the remote needs to be recognized by the camera. So you have the camera off, you have the camera in manual, then you have the remote off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to power on the remote controller and then I'm going to power on the camera. And now the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you find your uh, mid-level exposure. So you're gonna, because the camera is in manual, you're gonna wanna choose 
A very low ISO. The reason I'm going to do a low ISO is because I don't want a lot of noise. I want THRI to be as clean as possible. So I'm going to basically go, I'm going to give it a go with 400, see if that's going to be possible. Uh, if I can do it with 400, then that will be ideal. Uh, and then, of course, you, char you start changing um, your exposure. Now, in terms of exposure, you want to be quite high up. You probably want to be around F8 so that you have the sharpest image possible. Last thing you want on any HDRI is depth of field. You don't want that. So I'm going to try to keep it with F8 or F9, and then I'm going to try to find what's the speed that I need to actually photograph this. So my middle exposure at the moment, because there's so little light on this environment, uh, I'm getting one second of middle exposure. That's probably not going to be good. So I'm going to, I'm going to reduce my f-stop to 6.3 to see if I can get a better exposure. So you press on the button to try to expose um, and then you get the value. At the moment I'm getting around half a second. So once you've figured out that you're going to leave ISO to 400, half a second of exposure, and f-stop of 6.3, then it's time for you to put those settings in the Premote itself. Uh, so by navigating the Premote, you basically have to say the mid exposure is at, at the moment it's set to, it's set to 160, so I'm gonna have to change that. Uh, then once I do that, I'm gonna decide how many exposures I want. Now, usually you wanna have at least a minimum of seven, exp of five exposures. I'm gonna go with seven because I wanna have uh, the highest dynamic range uh, possible on my IGRI, but uh, the whole trick here is to have at least five. So it depends on how much time you have. Uh, now, the cool thing with this uh, 360 head is that it, as you rotate it, it kind of locks into place. As soon as it locks, that means it's done 90 degrees. So what you wanna do is you wanna take seven photos on all four angles. So let's start with the first burst of photos. Uh, I'm just gonna press start. So basically what you're gonna end up with is a very dark photo all the way to a very bright photo. And that is what's gonna build your HDRI. Once you're happy with that, you should always just double check if you're happy with the photos the first time around. So I'm gonna just press play here and just check them on my screen. Yeah, looks perfect to me so I can see a full dark image uh, going all the way to seven different photos until it's fully bright. So once you've done that, what you're going to do is you're going to rotate the camera 90 degrees to the other side. Now, without changing anything, you just press start again. And then, of course, you do it to the other way around. Now, you have to be careful that you could be in the field of view because it's 180 degrees. So you have to make sure that you're actually outside the field of view of 180 degrees to the lens. And then last but not least, you're going to do the last burst. And there you have it. That's pretty much it. Now we're all done. And as you can see, you can make this much faster than what I've just done here. Usually when I'm on set, I usually tend to do this in less than a minute. I just go in, make my main exposure, and then take my seven photos, seven photos, seven photos, seven photos, and I'm all done. So that's pretty much it. And then you would, should get a very good HDRI, much better than any sphere or any other kind of type of uh, method to try to get an HDRI for your lighting in CG. That's pretty much it here. I uh, really hope that you've uh, enjoyed this uh, little small tutorial and I uh, hope to see you soon. So don't forget to, of course, like my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, you can always follow me on Twitter at Hugo C. Guerra. Follow my channel on YouTube, Hugo's Desk. And I hope to see you guys very soon. And I will be back very soon with, with more on-set uh, tips and tricks. Thank you so much and see you guys very soon.